Hello everybody, here's the finished product of what you'll be learning how to program from scratch into your web pages using raw JavaScript and some CSS. It's a custom built digital animated clock that runs in real time on your web pages. And you can see here that it clearly works in all the major browsers. Here it is ticking along in Google Chrome, and here it is ticking along in Firefox and Internet Explorer. So that's the three most used browsers on the web and I'm sure it works in all the other less used browsers. The design of it is up to you 100%. You can change it and alter it any way you like using the CSS. And I'll show you that the programming logic behind how it runs is not very hard to understand and I'm going to take you through every little bit of how it works as I'm programming it you'll be a master JavaScript writer in no time at all. All this code logic was derived from my ActionScript 3 digital clock tutorial for Flash. So that is proof to you that programming is becoming more universal. Master one good web programming language and you'll master them all. Alright, let's rock and roll and show you how to program this thing. It's easy man, don't worry. Okay, the first thing we'll need to do is create a new web document. So on my desktop I'm just going to create a new folder. I'll call it my website. I'm going to double click inside that new folder. I'm going to open up Notepad++ and I'm going to save this as my desktop, my website. I'm just going to call it index. That'll be the page name and I'm going to make sure that it's an HTML document. Save. Alright, now I'm going to place in the beginnings of an HTML document, which is the HTML tag. Inside the HTML tag we have head tag and the body tag. We're going to assume that you have basic knowledge of HTML and CSS and the way that HTML and CSS interact together in a web document. The JavaScript, I'll explain every bit of the JavaScript. Now within an HTML document, everything you want to display in the page pretty much goes inside of this body tag. So that's where we'll start. We'll create a div tag. So we'll open and close a new div tag and inside of that div tag is where we're going to place our little clock that's where it's going to show to the user and for just getting it set up and styled we're going to put some default static value in it to pretend it was a running clock okay so we can go to run see what it looks like in chrome and you can see we just have a default a static time sitting there but we're going to animate that and style it. So we'll animate it in JavaScript and style it using CSS. So on this div tag, we want to make sure we give this an ID equals clock display. And this is where JavaScript will communicate with this div using that ID. And here we're going to put a class which is equal to let's just call this clock style and this will use to communicate with this div in the CSS and style it up to make it look any way we want now let's start to style that up with CSS in the head tag we're gonna go ahead and add a style tag make sure we close that off and inside the style tag going to add all the styling for that class which is clock style open the curly brace and close the curly brace now in between the two curly braces we put CSS attributes and values and I'll show you how it changed the style up here let's press control s save it and run in chrome so now we can see we have a nice look for our digital clock. But you can see it's not yet animated. We're going to add the simple JavaScript here in just a second to get that animated in real time. And we can also run it in Firefox. See what it looks like in Firefox. Same thing. Okay. And Internet Explorer. Alright, looks good. So now you can see we have our div in our HTML body and up in the head tag we have some style class definitions actually let's bring this up make it nice and neat 
that div on one line. But now when we put the JavaScript in, we're going to remove this static text we have here that we just put in place for styling it up. And the JavaScript will sync text into that div every second. It'll update the text that's displaying in that div. When working with JavaScript, we have some options of where we want to put our scripting. We can put it in the head tag along with the styling there. Or we can put it directly in the body tag. In this instance, I'm going to put it directly under my div tag here. Now when putting JavaScript at work on a page, you have to put the script tag. So we'll put the opening script tag, which has type set to text JavaScript and language set to JavaScript. And right under that we can close up that script tag. And inside of the script tag is where we start coding here. And the first thing we'll do is create a function. Now this function we can give it any name we want. I'm going to call it render time because that's exactly what it's going to be doing. Open the curly brace, go down a couple lines, close the curly brace off, and there's your function nest all ready and set up. Now everything that is going to occur inside of render time is going to happen once a second because we're going to set it up that way. So let me show you the line that'll make this possible. We're going to use the set timeout method in JavaScript and it takes two arguments the first one being the action or command that you want to occur when the time or limit is reached which in this case we have it set to one second or one thousand milliseconds which is one second so every second set timeout is going to make render time run again so you see how that works let's put a little indentation there Now if you were to run this page right now, this function render time would never fire off. To get that function render time to fire off, you just execute that function right under where you code it out. That's how you execute it. So this line right here that I just put in, when this line is read, it's going to fire off this function called render time. And then inside of the render time function, set timeout is going to make render time function keep happening every second. That's how that works. This way we can update this div's display. Let's just get rid of this. We don't need it. JavaScript is going to be adding that for us. Now we're going to access the date object in order to get the variables we need here. So let's create a new variable to hold that date object. Let's call it current time which is going to be a, a string that will hold the time and date and we can pluck values out of it that we need to create little variables, variables for the hours, minutes, and seconds. So first let's create a little variable before we get the hours, minutes, and seconds out of that current time variable. We're going to create one for the AM PM functionality. We're going to var DM, and that's Latin. And let's start it as AM by default. The next variable is where we're going to start plucking out the hours, minutes, and seconds from the date object. So we'll call the hours H. We're going to take this current time variable, which is the date object, and from it we're going to get the hours. So we'll type in dot get hours and for the minutes and seconds it's going to be very similar so we can just copy and paste those lines change this variable to uh, M and this one to S so that's minutes and that's seconds so this one you just change to get minutes and the last one get seconds so what that's going to do for us is put the hours into a little variable called h, the current minute that it is into a variable called m, and the current second into a variable called s. And you can see at develop PHP we have some information on the date object in JavaScript. 
Down at the bottom you'll see the properties and methods of the date object. You can see we're using get minutes, get seconds, get hours. And those are methods of the date object. Just so you know. Get hours, get minutes, get seconds right there. Okay, we're almost done. We have our variables and we have our little timer method set up there. So here all we have to do is put in the logic because the time is going to be in military time. We need to have some if statements in place to evaluate whether or not let's say if the hour is 3. We have to be sure we put a 0 in front of the 3. Or if the second is 2. We have to make sure we have a 0 put in front of the 2. And also since the time is going to be military style it will have numbers like 16 for the hours which is 4 p.m. really so we have to do some conversions for that so if we get this hours variable returns a value of 16 we have to make sure we turn it to a 4 and make sure we turn dm to p.m. you see what I'm saying because we'll know it's 4 p.m. because 1600 military time is 4 p.m. And once we program those little if statements in, this thing's ready to run, I believe. Okay, so let's lay out this logic here. If h variable, the current hours, is equal to 0, then we know that h must equal 12. Else if the current hour is greater than 12 like I said if it happens to be 16 or 18 or 22 we have to convert it so to do that is very simple we just say current hour is equal to current hour minus 12 so if you happen to have current hour coming back is 16 in military time then you just make the current hour 16 minus 12 making it 4 and here we have to put another line in to make dm variable equal to pm because at that point we'll know it's pm if the hours are greater than 12. That's what this evaluation is saying. If the current hour is greater than 12. Alright, now we're going to evaluate to see whether or not the hours, the minutes, or the seconds require a zero in front of it if they happen to be a single digit number like anything under 10. If it's anything under 10 we have to throw a zero in front of it so our digital clock displays correctly. So let's put in an if statement nest there for the hours, one for the minutes. Actually let's just set the first one up and then we can copy the other two because they'll be very similar. If the current hour is less than 10 we'll make the current hour display is equal to zero put a zero in front of whatever that number is so you can just put plus h that's how you stick a zero in front of the number if it happens to be less than 10 so let's just grab that whole little statement there go down one line put one in for the minutes and one in for the seconds so let's just change this h to an m here this one as well and this one and now you're all set up for your minutes this to an S, this to an S and change this one to an S and that's it you're all set up now now the last thing we have to do is tell JavaScript to place the values of these hours, minutes and seconds and the PM and all that stuff into this div container that we set up here that's all styled up using the CSS that we already set up and these lines are very simple now right here we're going to put a variable that says a variable named my clock and it's equal to document dot get element by ID clock display so we're using the get element by ID function to target this div with an ID of clock display see it's very simple so my clock is equal to pretty much that element on the page so in the next line we can actually sync the value into that element on the page so we say my clock first one will be for Firefox 
and put two lines in text content because I noticed that in Firefox the clock won't display if you have uh, inner text or inner HTML being used so we'll use both lines so this one is for Firefox equal to the hours plus which this plus sign isn't adding anything it's just bringing the string together for display so right next to the hours we're gonna put a colon then right next to the colon we're gonna put the minutes on the other side of that colon then we're gonna add one more colon and put the seconds then we're gonna add I guess just a space and then we'll add DM which will be the little AM or PM variable now this right now if you run this page right now you'll see it works in Firefox but maybe Internet Explorer and Google Chrome won't work let's try it out run in Firefox see it shows up in Firefox just nice now let's run it in Chrome it shows up in Chrome real nice let's run it in Internet Explorer this is the one where we probably won't see it it doesn't show up at all so the next line will be for Internet Explorer only so that first line there is for I guess all other browsers we're using text content to place it into that div here we'll use inner text or you can use inner HTML now let's save it control s and run it in Internet Explorer and there you go and you wouldn't have to allow that active X if you're online that's just when you're on your local computer so you can see it running in Internet Explorer there just fine now run it in Chrome it's beautiful run it in Firefox looking good now let's take a look at this document we have here now that we've assembled everything's done you are now finished with your clock and that wasn't much code at all it's not very difficult to understand either okay so there you go that is how you can create a digital clock using JavaScript raw JavaScript and CSS and have it work in all the browsers I hope you enjoyed this JavaScript tutorial and maybe now you have a little more insight into how the variables logic and evaluations and things like that work how to access properties and methods of certain objects that you have available to you in JavaScript and things like that. We'll see you next lesson.